here in Milwaukee. MLB The Show has action out of the NL Central. It's the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Milwaukee Brewers. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. About to get started here. And on the mound today, Dallas Keuchel. But Chris, he hasn't exactly been stellar here on his home mound. Well, I'll say this. Every player wants to perform well at their home ballpark, in front of their fans, in front of the city. And you know this guy no different. He wants to be more effective here. So, you know, look at the numbers. They haven't been great at home. I'm sure he wants to turn that around, and we'll see if he's able to start that in this one. Ready to go. Here's Andrew McCutcheon to hit. Swing and a miss, and he got him to chase. Hit in the air, center field. Sizes this one up. And out number one on the grab. Okay, let's check out the lineup. Not a whole lot going their way offensively the last few games, Chris. Yeah, Boog, and that can put more pressure on the pitching staff to try to limit the opponent to just one or two runs a game, knowing that their offense is not scoring right now. And that never really works well because you try to be too fine and you end up giving up a lot of runs. So we'll see if everybody can just relax, bring things together, and perform at a level that they're capable of. The pitch. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's two down. The designated hitter, Connor Joe. Two outs, base is empty. Connor Joe, the next pirate to hit. Two outs. And now it's filled up. Three and two. Good job to fight that one off. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Bucks go down quietly. Now it's the Brewers' turn. It's a scoreless ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Back here at American Family Field. Today's starting pitcher, Luis Ortiz. And for whatever reason, he's been more effective on the road like this than at home, Chris. Boog, I really think he likes being the villain. This is a guy that seems like he thrives off of the negative energy in those away ballparks and gets better the more hostile the crowd gets. So whatever the reason is, he's got good stuff combined with the right type of attitude. I think that's why he's been so effective away from home this season. It's so hard to slow yourself down when you see that juicy breaking ball, but the most success happens when you try to take that right back up the middle approach. He's got it, and there's one down. Let's take a look at the Brewers lineup. One of the more high-powered lineups in the game right now. It's built to do damage, and they got some guys that can punish the baseball, Chris so fun to watch these guys take their at bats I mean they're so disciplined don't give not just at bats away but really pitches away very aggressive competitive in the zone and when they connect there's usually some loud noise to it so we'll keep our ears open today righty to the plate left field Reynolds pulls it down and there's two gone Batting third, the left fielder. Christian. Now it's Christian Yelich. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. Comes up empty, that's strike two. 
They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris, and it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit. swing and a miss, struck him out, and it's a three up, three down inning. Gone in order are the Brewers. Scoreless after one. Back here in Milwaukee, and here is Nick Gonzalez. Nick Gonzalez. Next offering in there for a strike. And a count one and two. Hammer, base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. He was all over that one. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. And now let's see if they force some action with good wheels on the bases. Now batting key Brian Hayes. Kicks and fires. Rudder takes off. Hit on the ground to the right side. And he handles it himself for the out. That's a good piece of hitting right there. The job is to move the runner up and give your team a chance to score the go-ahead run. That's exactly what happens. So you better believe your teammates are happy with you after that at bat. And now the right fielder, Edward Olivares. Gonzalez, the runner at second with one away. Swings and misses, struck him out. Definitely made him chase a little bit out of his own right there. I don't think that's a strike if he takes it. Pretty textbook pitching. Get ahead in the count, get the guy in the box on his heels, and then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage. Now it's the shortstop. High fly ball out to center field. Perkins snags it, and that is that. Pirates leave one. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. And welcome back to the ballpark. Willie Adamas stands in. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. Yeah, we go beyond just the uh, you know fielding percentage and you know what it looks like, but the ability to have a range and you know close holes that you know are normally there against an average defender. But this guy is special, and you can see it in his first step quickness. Wouldn't chase that time. Boogan, the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump, and defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle, you can lose your mechanics, but the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way, and this is what this guy does. Garrett Mitchell up now for the Brewers. And the pitch. Sit down on strikes. He's got to be frustrated with that call. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. And yeah, the batter now, Blake Perkins. Two ball, one strike. No score here in the second. Just missed. Clyde Washington with home plate duties in this one. A little bit of a low zone boot from Clyde. Nothing crazy, though. Pitchers that work consistently down around the knees and are able to command their off-speed stuff tend to have some pretty good success with him back there behind the plate. And he deals. Sliced hard but foul. What about some no-nos? Like, you can't call the umpire blue the way you do in Little League or high school, right? <laughs> yeah. Even in the minor leagues, you'll oh. learn quickly. Uh, you call the umpire blue. You better learn his name. And uh, that's just part of being a professional player and even a major league player. First and second one out. 
Now, Bryce Turan. Two on, one out. Hard hit down the line and left. Could be extra bases. Adamas, rounds third, headed for the plate. One runs in. Now a second crosses the plate. And they take a two-run lead. Well, there you go. The RBI machine, another clutch run scoring it back. Yeah, he's been so good in these situations. Call it clutch if you want, but his resume speaks for itself. One out, runner at second. And now, Vinny Capra. Righty delivers. And another ball. Two runs across in the inning. Bottom half of inning number two. That one fouled off. Two and two. Right-hander kicks, deals. Into center. Taylor in position. Puts it away for the out. And there are two down. Now the catcher up to hit. Eric Haas. Man at second. To the left side, but it is well foul. And the righty deals. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Brewers pick up a run on this RBI double. And it's two zip. Back after this on the show. Here at American Family Field. And here's the catcher, Joey Bart. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Well, the offense has gotten going, and a pitcher wants to go out there, have a real quick inning, get those guys back into the dugout so those bats can stay hot. Next offering misses down and away. Battling here as he fouls it away. And a base hit up the middle. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Timing on the swing was good. Able to shoot the ball up the middle. Didn't square it up as much as he probably would have liked, but that's a good approach paying off. Michael A. Taylor, the next Pirate to hit. This one lifted in the air, left field. Yelich pulls it down, and there's one away. Good pitch. He just kind of had him out in front on that pitch away and wasn't able to stay close. And now it's Andrew McCutcheon. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. That one finds the corner, and a count one and two. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. And another ball. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely. And I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it surprised a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. And that's the second out of the inning on the first play. Wow, this is one of those plays that happens sometimes, but it never really should. It seems like you just got a bad read on the ball, and the good throw from the outfield was perfect to get the out. Brian Reynolds here. Oh. 
And now two balls and a strike. The pitch. No, that's a buck. Chris with that distraction and a speedy guy at first. He's in a favorable hitter's count. Well, if nothing else, I mean, this is a great spot for a hitter to be in. They get the force. They don't come much closer than that. Bang, bang, play to end the inning. So one hit is all they get. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. It's the Brewers two and the Pirates nothing. Set for the bottom of the third. So here's the Brewers DH. Jackson Chorio. The pitch. Swing and a base hit. And the leadoff man aboard. I don't know how he's able to shoot that pitch the other way and still put something on it. That pitch was inside and he let it get really deep. So pretty incredible hands to fight it off and still get good wood on it. And now they've got some speed on first. So we'll see if they try to get him into motion. And it's Reese Hoskins up to the dish. Well, these Brewers do a great job, Boog, of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way. And I'm seeing very patient at bats out of them. They're doing a good job of working the pitch count, and they've been able to push a couple of runs across to score as well. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. That one's carrying. That's down. One hops off the wall. Coming home. He scores. It's 3 zip. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. Pretty much just a textbook double into the gap, and when you can drop one in there between the outfielders, you know you're making the turn at first. Just an excellent swing. And now it's Christian Yelich. Kicks and deals. Fights that one away, still one and two. Still relatively early, but with the pair of runs already on the board, the ripple effect of that high pitch count might set him up to do more damage later in this game. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And now one away. That oh, was a tough slider right there. He couldn't get a piece okay. of it just to try to keep That's the at-bat alive. And really? hitters will tell you that slider, when a guy's able to really tunnel the pitch where it looks like a fastball and then late, has a really good bite, so tough to lay off of because you've made the decision you don't want to get beat by a fastball, and then you swing and you miss, and you go back to the dugout shaking your head. Righty to the plate. Ripped to third and caught. Throw behind the runner, and they've got him doubled off. Run scoring double for the Brewers this inning. It's now 3-0. Major League Baseball is on the show. As we go to the top of the fourth, at the plate for Pittsburgh, Connor Joe. Connor Joe. The lefty fires. Foul ball still a one and two count. The pitch. Fouls it off still one and two. The wind and the pitch. That missed by a lot. Now two and two. Next offering is outside. Now in this three ball count, down in the ball game, you've got to be very selective. Take your walk if they'll give it to you. And a pitch. Comes up empty as he chases that one in the dirt. Haas down to first with it. In time to get him, one away in the strikeout. Well, I'm not sure what he was waiting on right there. He got the change up and still late on it. You rarely see that. It almost makes you think, that he was trying to set the pitcher up. I mean, if you can't catch up to the off-speed stuff, there's no way you're going to touch a fastball. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Nick Gonzalez. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Mm -hmm. 
on the ground right side and he takes it himself for the out good sinker low in the zone right there and produced exactly what he was looking for ball on the ground nice ground out hey two outs base is empty key Brian Hayes now at the plate two down nobody on and there's a foul ball the wide the kick and the one two on the ground to third fires over to Hoskins and that is the inning down in order go the Pirates they trail in this one three nothing And we're back, bottom of the fourth, and stepping in is the speedy Garrett Mitchell. Mitchell. Next pitch is outside. Great one. And the right hander deals. And it's ball four. He missed down low. Well, that could be a tone setter for the inning. Four straight pitches and the leadoff batters on base. We'll see if the next guy waits until there's a called strike before he takes the bat off his shoulder. So, man aboard. Now, here is Blake Perkins. And here it comes. That one fouled off. And now it's one and two. That one missed. This is one of those situations the infielders have to pre-plan and understand that the ball's going to be hit extremely hard right at them if they're going to have a chance to go for a double play. And a pitch. Three ball. Two strikes. Mitchell gets his lead at first. Nobody out. This one in the air right field. Olivares under it. Nabs it. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't okay. quite barrel it up Two. enough to really drive it. This is Bryce Terang. Ortiz checks on first. Mitchell gets back easily. Base runner with a one-way lead right there. All he's trying to do is get a look at the pitcher's move. Had no intent of stealing on that pitch. Swing and a miss as he was out front. Always tough to turn two on a speedster like this. It's even harder with him coming out of the left-handed batter's box. You really need something to hit hard on the ground that they can handle to turn two quickly. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. And a pitch. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Payoff pitch. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Ninth pitch of the at bat due next. Outside, and that is ball four. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. They just keep handing out gifts, boo. So are we supposed to bring something? See, I think just our presence wow. is the present. At the belt and fires. Nope. And the slider oh, just misses. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. Three and ball. another ball. One, Two walks in the inning already, and he just doesn't seem comfortable out there. Like, he can find the right mechanics and then repeat them. Now front pulls that one foul. Now it's three and two. Runners at first and second with one gone. Ripped in the right center, and that should be extra bases. Around third, one run is in. 
Another scores. Two runs in on the play, and the lead is up to five. Love how he let that ball travel. He trusted his hands. Nice job of going the other way. Pirates with a new arm on the mound. Martin Perez. I think it's got to be a little tough coming in out of the pen when your guys are trailing so big on the scoreboard. Just doesn't have the same intensity to it, but he's got to find a way because these batters count the same for his stats, obviously, regardless of the score. Man at second with one away. Eric Haas up now for the Brewers. Nope, that's and a good eye there. Man at second. He swings and fouls one off. That's down and in. One out and a runner at second. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. The punch out there. And two away now. Now back, the designated back to the top of the Milwaukee order. Next for Milwaukee, Jackson Chorio. The 3 1 in for a strike, full count. No need to offer at that pitch until you get to two strikes. It's just a low percentage of success when you want to try to go after that down and away pitch. And now the lefty on the ground. Fires across the diamond. That ends the inning and stops things from getting out of hand. But they'll pick up a couple runs here, both coming on this two-run double. And the lead is now 5-0. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Here in Milwaukee, the top five, John Chavi with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Edward Olivares. The lefty ready and a 1 1. Ground ball to the right side. Tosses to the pitcher, covering the bag. One away here in the fifth. Good fade and sinking action of that changeup. Got that hitter to roll over. Here's the shortstop at the play. Base is empty, one away. And we're at the top of the fifth. A little out front there as he swings through it. One and two. Ground ball, left side. Low throw, and he can't take it out. The catcher, number 14, Joey Barnes. Man at first, here's Joey Bart now. He's looking to hit the ball the other way in 99% of his at-bats, but if you make a mistake middle in, he can touch you up for a four-bagger. The 1 1. That one pushed foul. The pitch. Oh. And it's even up. Man at first, one away. Next pitch is outside. Three ball. Team strike. Lace down the line. Could be extra bases. Around third. The relay. The tag, and he's safe. A couple of hits in a row for him here. That's a good sound coming off the bat, man. And as he connected out front and ripped it into the outfield, that's one of those swings where you just don't even feel the ball hit the barrel. That's a poor stroke. Could be a chance here for them to start clawing back into this ballgame. One out, runner at second. Michael A. Taylor digs in now. 
Ball to strike. The pitch. On the ground to third. Fires over to yep, Hoskins. And there are two outs. The first base hit, number 22, Andrew McCutcheon. So the Pirates batting order turns over. And now the Pirates leadoff man, Andrew McCutcheon. But the Pirates strike on this run scoring double. It's now 5 1. It's Major League Baseball and it's on the show. And welcome back to the ballpark. Stepping in the long ball threat, Reese Hoskins. The wind of the pitch. So now 1 and 2. One ball, two strikes. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Ripped to short. In plenty of time to first. And that's the first out in the bottom of the fifth. Number 22, Christian Yelich. Here's Yelich at the dish. Bounce to the right. Gonzalez. Home half of the fifth inning moving along. Two quick outs. Up next for Milwaukee. The shortstop, Willie Adamas. And now the shortstop, Willie Adamas. Here comes a pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Strikes, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. Brewers go down quietly. They leave this one, though, 5-1. Back here at American Family Field, digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Brian Reynolds. Brian Reynolds. Check swing, went around, and the count is one and two. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. He's locked in at the plate when he's using the whole field. He was out in front there, just needs to let the ball travel a little more, and his timing will be back on track. Good pitch for the strikeout. Connor Joe, the next pirate to hit. Outside low, ball two. Movement in the bullpen, Tobias Myers appears to be getting ready. And I'm sure he's feeling some nerves. This would be his major league debut. Milner, a left-hander, also throwing. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Around first and hustling for second. And he'll pull in there with a stand-up double. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Man, that feels so good to shoot an absolute bolt the opposite way. Split the gap and know that you've got extra bases right off the bat. That's the kind of thing hitters dream about when they're falling asleep at night. Nick Gonzalez, the next pirate to hit. Kicks and fires. And that drops in for a strike. One-two now. On the ground to the left. 
Slings it across, yeah. two away. That's what a good sinker's designed to do. Get a guy to roll over a little bit, hit the ball on the ground, kill some worms while you're at it. Key Brian Hayes, the next pirate to hit. The Brewers leading by four, and we're the top half of the sixth. Liner, and that should be extra bases. Coming home. He'll score easily. It's 5-2. Fires the second too late, and he's got a double. Comes through with the RBI. Textbook bat control right there. Got a pitch on the outside, saw it deep into the zone, and just barreled it up, went the other way for the knock. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Dallas Keuchel will depart, and we'll be back with their first arm out of the pen after a quick break. Now on the bump, Tobias Myers. And he's been really shutting down hitters from the right side of the plate this year. Not a lot of hard contact, not a lot of hits, period. Edward Olivares, the next pirate to hit. Right-handed reliever. Fights that one away, still one and two. And another ball. Really good slider. He's up there just hoping that it ends up off the plate away. And the pitch. Foul ball, another 2 2 upcoming. Hayes at second with two down. Swings and misses at the breaking ball in the door. Gets to it on the first. That completes the strikeout, and that'll do it. But a run will score in the inning on this RBI double. It's 5-2. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. And we're back. Well, we go bottom six. Up now for Milwaukee, Garrett Mitchell. Here's a 1-1. One -one. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. The 1-2. And there's a rocket into the outfield. Makes the turn and heads for second. And he's there with a leadoff double. Everything came together for him. Double into the gap, and that was a really nice swing to beat the inside pitch. Just beat him to the spot. Kept his hands tight inside that baseball, and that just allowed him to drive it into the alley right there. So, man aboard. Next for the Brewers, Blake Perkins. Kicks and deals. That's in there. That is strike two. pitch and that's down it away runner in scoring position nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth line drive and that should be extra bases Mitchell around third he will score it's six two safely into second he's got a double picks himself up in RBI I love the approach he had right there with that pitch not trying to do too much but still looking to drive it and that's exactly what he's able to do into the opposite field gap for the double Bryce Terang the next to hit 
the pitch. Waves at the bender for the strikeout. Oh, that's a curveball that people like to describe as a hammer or Uncle Charlie, and you can see why. It's not a looping slow curve. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. Now the third baseman, Vinny Capra. Man at second. Fouls one off. Two and two. And here it comes. Bounced up the middle. Throws the first in time. No, well, he didn't recognize changeup earlier enough. Got out in front a little bit, rolled over on it, and beat it into the ground. Here's the catcher, Eric Haas. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. And he deals. Oh. And another ball. Two outs with a runner at third. And that's in for a strike. He dives, but he can't make the catch. The throw is still in time. And they do get the third out. The inning is over. Brewers pick up a run on this RBI double. It's now 6-2. You're dialed into the show. We go to the top of the seventh at the plate for Pittsburgh, number 19. The Pirates in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the leadoff, man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. And strike two. One and two. Started after it, tried to hold up. Now a look to first, and yes, he did. That's a swing, according to Earl Hendricks. This is Joey Bart. Number 14, Joey Bart. Base is empty, one away. Here in the top half of inning number seven. Swing and a miss. One and two. A one-two count. All he's seen is fastballs. You've got to expect something off speed. Stay back. And that's in the dirt. Got him. Two gone now. Up next for the Pirates, Michael A. Taylor. Michael A. Two out spaces empty. And the righty deals. Next offering popped in the air, right field. He's there, he's got it. And that is that. Now a right-handed arm out of the bullpen, Ryder Ryan. And he's been racking up strikeouts at a high rate this year, typically at least one in inning, so he'll be tough to get to. So the lineup flips over. Now it's the DH, Jackson Chorio. Right-hander kicks, deals. And a big swing and a miss. Clearly was sitting on a fastball right there and just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle with two strikes. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. That's that classic now, wipeout right. slider Great below the zone right there. Just Three. nasty. Looks like a fastball oh, thigh high yeah. that you got to protect the zone. And then it's just that late break that fools you and kind of makes you look silly. The pitch. That's off the mark, and it's 2-1. and one. Activity in Pittsburgh's bullpen. Dennis Santana loosening up in case he's called upon by Derek Shelton. Fleming also throwing. One out, base is empty. That one misses. 3-1. and one. Mm -hmm. 
swings and blasts one deep to left center. He's up to three home runs in the series. And they add to the lead. It's 7-2. He absolutely crushed that one. No doubt about that one, Boog. We knew it wasn't coming back. Good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. So one out, nobody on. Next for Milwaukee, Christian Yelich. Swing and a miss, chased it out of the zone. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. Left-hand hitter waits. Gets a piece and stays alive. One down, base is empty. And yeah, there's a ball. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. Third time he struck out in this one, and definitely no, an individual performance you want to flush. He just hasn't really? looked very comfortable up there. Man. Just one of those days. But when you're still winning the ball game, at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W. Two outs, base is empty. And the batter will be the shortstop, Willie Adamas. Why to kick the pitch? Foul ball still a one and two count. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. But the Brewers add one with a solo shot. It's now a 7-2 ball game. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Back here in Milwaukee, and now the first baseman, the first Andrew baseman McCutcheon. Number 22, Andrew McCutcheon. The wind and the pitch. Swing and a miss. I think he was sitting off speed there. Swing and a miss. Struck him out and one away. So up next, Brian Reynolds. Brian Reynolds. Base is empty one away, and we're in the top of the eighth. On the corner for a strike. One ball, two strikes. Swings through that one, it's a strikeout. Well, anytime you can punch out the top two guys in a lineup to start an inning, you've got to be feeling pretty good out there on the mound because when you think of just having a distraction, table setters on the base paths, and all of a sudden you're dealing with the number three hitter, any distraction can cause you to serve up a cookie, and instead of it being a solo shot, it's a two- or three-run homer. This hitter's looking for a fastball, but I'm not sure he's going to get one. Pitcher doesn't have to challenge him. He feels better about his off-speed secondary stuff and stay with it. In the air, out towards right center. Mitchell going after it. Brings it in. And that is that. On the mound now for the Pirates, Josh Fleming. Well, they need someone to stop the bleed and keep the score right where it is. Seems like a tough task today with the way this lineup is swinging it. Now it's the right fielder, Garrett Mitchell. The right fielder, Garrett Mitchell. And that's a strike. 
Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Colin Holderman getting loose out there. And a pitch. Fouls it off, still one and two. Hard hit, left field, base hit. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Okay. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle, allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer, and he hit the ball on the screws. Blake Perkins up now for the Brewers. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Mitchell on at first. Nobody out. On the ground a short could be two. The throw to second, and it's a double play. Oh, very fast developing play right there. No margin for error. Nice double play on a fast runner up the line. Two outs, base is empty. Up now for Milwaukee, Bryce Terang. Not even close there. Two and one. Two down, nobody on. Here, the bottom half of the eighth inning. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Just misses without one. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Lifted in the air down the left side. And that lands in no man's land, a foul ball. Good battle here, about to be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Foul tip into the mid, struck him out. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Trevor McGill. Big swing and miss stuff right here, Bird. Averaging more than one strikeout per inning this season. So far, he's been pretty electric. That one, a triple digits. Wow, triple digits on the gun. I know there are more pitchers that can reach that now than in the past, but it's no. still impressive to watch. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Bogey just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count up at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. He's two outs away. So next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Key Brian Hayes. The pitch. And another ball. Bounce to the right side. Now only one out remaining. At the plate for Pittsburgh, Edward Olivares. Two outs. And a foul ball. The Pirates down to their final strike. Two down, nobody on.
the other way and it goes just foul. Two two on the way. And it skips into dirt. And that one hit to first and it finds its way through for a hit. And after grinding through that at bat he gets the best of him. Now it's the shortstop. One one now. They're down to their final strike. And a pitch. Swing and a miss, and he got him. Ball game. Keuchel with his first major league win. Yeah, nicely done. I'm sure he'll feel very good about that and get the ball for his trophy case as he should. A start he won't ever forget. 7-2 your final here today. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chomby. Talk to you soon.